Thank you for joining us for The Drive Back, the movie podcast where we imitate our favorite thing to do after a movie, which of course is to talk about it on the ride home. I'm Garrett, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend and co-host, Adrian. Hey. And today, if you're watching the video, you can see that we're dressed up kind of nice, because we're doing the Drive Back Awards, baby. This is where we get to uh, reveal our favorite and best films of 2021. So all of this and more coming up on the Drive Back. Alrighty, so the Drive Back Awards, Adrian, this is super exciting. I'm so excited to be doing this. Yeah, very much so. It's been a long time coming, and now there were enough movies this year to actually uh, host something like this, so very exciting. Absolutely. I think that was the key. We didn't do it last year, um, but uh, hey, you know, the world changes, and the world hopefully gets slightly better, so, uh, but a couple things before we jump into this. Number one, obviously, these are all based off of films that we have seen this year. So we're not going to be nominating any films on here just because they're supposed to be good and they might win a lot of awards. So you're not going to see things like West Side Story or, you know, anything like that. Um, also, uh, Adrian and I have seen different films this year. Uh, we've gone on record. I've gone to the theaters a lot more than Adrian has during this time. So I've seen a lot more and I have a lot more nominees. Um, so Adrian and I will be handing out our own awards for each category. So we have our own nominees and our own winner for each one. And then lastly, as you'll see when we get to the performance awards, um, we're not doing actor or actress awards. We are simply combining everyone into best performance. Um, and not only just to get rid of the binary system, but uh, also it just feels like the right thing to do. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Adrian, you've got the, the first award here. And I do, yeah. It? Starting off with best popular film or blockbuster. Uh, these are the movies that drew people to theaters and made people want to get back out there and see something cool and large scale. So starting off, number one is Dune Part 1, directed by Denny Villeneuve. Ghostbusters Afterlife, directed by Jason Reitman. Jungle Cruise, directed by Juan Colesera. Mortal Kombat, directed by Simone McCoy. Or Simon. Sorry, Simone. You never know. <laughs> No Time to Die by Carrie jo Yohi Fukunaga. Fukunaga. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings by Destin Daniel Creighton. Spider-Man No Way Home, directed by John Watts. The Suicide Squad, directed by James Gunn. The Tomorrow War, directed by Chris McKay. And Venom Let There Be Carnage by Andy Serkis. And the winner is... Spider-Man, No Way Home. Uh, absolutely the blockbuster of the year. I think it drew millions of people out. I think it earned over a billion dollars right away. I mean, just an absolutely incredible film to pull people back into theaters if they were hesitant. Um, and an, a blockbuster by every definition of the term. So absolutely a well-deserved win from me. So congratulations. Absolutely. And I think it actually just hit. I think it's about to overtake Titanic at the time of recording. And it'll be the number five highest earning film of all time. Wow. Which is insane, uh, especially during a pandemic. Um, so, uh, moving on to my award for Best Popular Film Slash Blockbuster. The nominees are Free Guy, directed by Sean Levy. Godzilla vs. Kong, directed by Adam Wingard. Halloween Kills, directed by David Gordon Green. Jungle Cruise, directed by Jean Collet Serra. Mortal Kombat, directed by Simon McCoy. No Time to Die, directed by Kerry Joji Fukunaga. Spider-Man No Way Home, directed by John Watts. And The Suicide Squad, directed by James Gunn. And my winner for Best uh, Popular Film Slash Blockbuster of 2021 is The Suicide Squad. Um, of all of the films on this list, I feel like it was the best film out of all of them. It had the best scene-to-scene -scene transitions, it had some of the best writing... And to be honest, it took the idea of the Suicide Squad and made a movie about them good <laughs> and, and not the 2016 pile of garbage that we got. Um, and I think James Gunn just unhinged is a pure creative force. So 
awesome job. I'm really looking forward to the Peacemaker series, uh, which the time this comes out will be on Thursday. So looking forward to that. But uh, moving along, Adrian, we have an interesting award next. <laughs> from Next there. up is Best Animated Film. Uh, and I did only see one animated film that was released in 2021. Uh, so my nominees are Riot and the Last Dragon, directed by Don Hall and Carlos Lopez Estrada. And my winner is Raya and the Last Dragon, directed by Don Hall and Carlos Lopez Estrada. Um, can't really say much to it. It's a one-for-one. One. Um, I didn't see any other movies, but of those I did see, Raya and the Last Dragon absolutely deserves the win. So congratulations. Well, awesome. It's, uh, it is a good movie. So much so that it's on my nominees list. Uh, my nominees for Best Animated Film for 2021 are Encanto, directed by Jared Bush and Byron Howard. Luca, directed by Enrico Casarosa. The Mitchells vs. the Machines, directed by Michael Rianda and Jeff Rowe. Raya and the Last Dragon, directed by Don Hall and Carlos Lopez Estrada. And Ron's Gone Wrong, directed by Sarah Smith and Jean-Philippe Vine. Uh, and my winner for the Best Animated Film of 2021 is... The Mitchells vs. the Machines. Um, this is yet another film from the, the incredibly talented team behind the Lego movie and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, as well as the criminally underrated Cloudy with a Chance of Meatball movies. Um, there, this movie is just so much fun. It's literally a laugh a minute, and it's very rare when it doesn't land. It's just so well written. There's also, an, like, at the end of the film, there is a normalized same-sex relationship, which is huge for a family movie like this. Um, and it's just awesome. It's a great movie. If you have Netflix, which most of you do, <laughs> it's it's on there. Just watch it, I swear. But, moving on, we have the next award for you, Adrian. Next up is Best Score or Soundtrack. Uh, so this is movies that either had music in them that I really liked or actually had a score that was absolutely incredible. So starting off is Bo Burnham's Inside, directed by Bo Burnham. Or music by Bo Burnham. Mm -hmm. Dune Part 1 with music by Hans Zimmer. Mortal Kombat with music by Benjamin Walfish. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings with music by Joel P. West. Spider-Man No Way Home with music by Michael Giacchino. And the, Sp the Suicide Squad with music by John Murphy. And the winner of Best Soundtrack is Dune Part 1 with music by Hans Zimmer. Um, absolutely an incredibly original and authentic sound for such a large-scale movie. Um, I know they invented a lot of new techniques for audio with this movie, um, and as well as their own language at times to make it sound like more immersive and more accurate to what we were seeing on screen. So just bravo all the way around. A pretty incredible film. Awesome, yes. Uh, it is a great soundtrack. It's fantastic. Um, but uh, my award for best score slash soundtrack of 2021, the nominees are Bo Burnham Inside with music by Bo Burnham, Dune Part 1, music by Hans Zimmer, The Green Knight, music by Daniel Hart, The Harder They Fall, music by James Samuel, The Mitchells vs. the Machines with music by Mark Mothersbaugh, and The Power of the Dog with music by Johnny Greenwood. And my winner for Best Score Slash Soundtrack of 2021 is Bo Burnham for Bo Burnham Inside. Um, it was a very tight race for this one, for me, between Dune and Bo Burnham's Inside. Um, but I feel like, you know, since Inside came out in May, I last year now, uh, I still sing these songs. A lot of them. Um, especially All Eyes on Me and um, That Funny Feeling just always pops into my head. They're absolutely great songs. Um, and well-deserved, Mr. Bo Burnham. Um, you absolutely deserve the award. Awesome. Um, moving on. Moving on to Best Visual Effects. Uh, obviously, these are the movies that had the absolute best visual effects. Uh, so the nominees are Dune Part 1, Mortal Kombat, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Spider-Man No Way Home, and Venom Let There Be Carnage. And my winner for Best Visual Effects is Dune. Uh, similar to the soundtrack uh, portion, I know they invented a ton of new technology for the visual effects in this movie. 
and the fact that they filmed some of it on IMAX in like 4K in the crazy film and it just looks absolutely stunning and you can't tell where the visual effects start and the movie ends. Um, it is absolutely mind-blowing to watch and completely keeps you in the movie. If not, takes you out of the movie to just realize how good the visual effects are. Because you know the way you're looking at can't be real, but it is. And it's pretty it's pretty astounding. So, 100% the win. Absolutely. Uh, so, my nominees for Best Visual Effects of 2021 are... Dune, Part 1. Eternals. Free Guy. Godzilla vs. Kong. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Spider-Man No Way Home. The Suicide Squad, and Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Um, and not surprisingly, my winner is also Dune Part 1, which will most likely be also the Oscar winner for Best Visual Effects. Um, a lot of the time, you can't tell what is real and what is not. And that is the magic of visual effects. I think, especially like the Ornithopter-type machines look incredible. Every single time there's a space shot with that giant tube machine, it is... Like groundbreaking looking, well, it is I'm, like during the big battle when all those ships are exploding, and oh, you can yeah. see like, the shields rippling. And I mean, it's it's incredible, absolutely incredible, and well well deserved there. Um, but moving along to best cinematography, yeah, my nominees for best cinematography, uh, which is best uh, just in my mind best camera work and best kind of in shot scenes. So my nominees are. Dune Part 1, Greg Frazier. The French Dispatch, Robert D. Yeoman. No Time to Buy, Linus Sandgren. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Bill Pope. Spider-Man No Way Home, Mauro Fiore. And Suicide Squad, Henry Bram. And my winner of Best Cinematography is... I think we're all starting to see what my favorite movie is here. But <laughs> Dune, part one, Grieg Frazier. Um, this movie, the shots, of course, they go hand-in-hand -hand with visual effects, um, but also the soundtrack adds on to it. It's kind of a cumulative effect here. But some of the shots in this movie are absolutely mind-blowing to look at. It is absolutely sci-fi brought to real out, re reality and real life in front of your eyes. Um, and that is a huge credit to the cinematography of this movie. It's it's Im amazingly impressive. So, congratulations. Yes, congratulations. Uh, moving on to my nominees for Best Cinematography for 2021. They are Candyman from John Gulisarian, Dune Part 1 from Grieg Fraser, The French Dispatch from Yobert D. Yeoman, The Green Knight from Andrew Draws Palermo, Lamb uh, from Eli Aronson, The Last Duel from Darius Wolski, and The Power of the Dog from Ari Wegner. And the winner for Best Cinematography for my award for 2021 is Eli Aronson for Lamb, um, a movie that uh, I don't think a lot of people are going to be recognizing this award season, which I feel like is a crime because it has some absolutely beautiful cinematography in it. Um, that's again it's a movie that's very warm very family focused and just has this kind of warmth to it where the camera work and the cinematography really introduces the tension and it's kind of underlying within everything absolutely beautiful and uh, well deserved for mr aronson so congratulations uh moving on we're starting to get into the big ones here yeah for best supporting performance i have andrew garfield and in spider way no way spider-man no way home aquafina in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Controversial, but I think she, this was her best movie. Benedict Cumberbatch, Spider-Man No Way Home. James Corden in Cinderella, also controversial, but I think he was the best part of that movie. Rebecca Ferguson, Dune Part 1. And Tobey Maguire from Spider-Man No Way Home. And my pick, uh, a lot of nostalgia here, but Tobey Maguire in Spider-Man No Way Home. To see him reprise the role in such an efficient and magical way on screen again was something really incredible and absolutely made the movie 100% what it is. Andrew, Andrew Garfield being in there would have been fine, but the fact that Tobey Maguire also shows up uh, is really, really outstanding and really makes the movie so absolutely best supporting. And he does a great job. Uh, I think he really brings his character back to life after all these years in, in the best way possible. So, congratulations. Awesome, yeah, congratulations. 
Um, for my nominees for Best Supporting Performance, there are 10 nominees in this category for me, and as such, I will actually be picking two winners uh, for Best Supporting Performance, uh, which the nominees are Anjanu Ellis for King Richard, Javier Bardem from Being the Ricardos, John Cena for The Suicide Squad, Cody Smith McPhee for The Power of the Dog, Kirsten Dunst for The Power of the Dog, Lakeith Stanfield for The Harder They Fall, Rebecca Ferguson for Dune Part 1, Regina King for The Harder They Fall, Tilda Swinton for The French Dispatch, and Tony Leung for Shang-Chi in The Legend of the Ten Rings. And my two winners for Best Supporting Performance of 2021 are... Uh, Anjanu Ellis uh, from King Richard and Cody Smith McPhee from The Power of the Dog. Um, starting with Anjanu, she gave an incredible performance alongside Will Smith as the mother of Venus and Serena Williams. Um, there is a warmth and a power almost to the role that she has, and it is absolutely magical to watch on screen. Um, and I didn't think she was going to outshine Will Smith because Will Smith was getting a lot of awards attention for this film. Um, but she almost did. <laughs> like they, they, Together, they were in fantastic couples. So congratulations, Ingenue. Um As for Cody, um, just an incredibly deep and layered performance from an actor who I never really cared for in pretty much any movie. I know he was in a couple of the X-Men films and some other young adult fiction type films, um, but an incredibly deep performance um, that at the end I almost felt was as manipulative as Benedict Cumberbatch's character. So... There is definitely some real quality and depth to the performance there, and so congratulations to Cody as well. But moving on. Moving on to Best Performance. So my nominees are Andrew Garfield in Tick, Tick, Boom, Daniel Craig in No Time to Die, Oscar Isaac from Dune Part 1, Simu Liu in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Timothy Chalamet from Dune Part 1, and Tom Holland from Spider-Man No Way Home. And maybe a little bit of a surprise, considering all the awards I've given before. But uh, Andrew Garfield from Tick, Tick, Boom is my winner for Best Performance. Um, he 100% carries this movie. It caught me completely off guard how good he is in this. Um, and it really, to me, expands his entire palette of ability in terms of what he can do and what he can perform. Um, so Lin-Manuel Miranda choosing him was absolutely a 100% correct guess or assumption. Um, he is very, very good in this movie, and his performance is out of this world. So congratulations. Awesome. Congratulations. And it is a fantastic performance. Um, my two, my, excuse me, my ten nominees for Best Performance in 2021 are Adam Driver for The Last Duel, Andrew Garfield for Tick, Tick, Boom, Benedict Cumberbatch for The Power of the Dog, Bo Burnham for Bo, Burner, Bo Burnham Inside, excuse me, Dev Patel for The Green Knight, Francis McDormand for The French Dispatch, Jeffrey Wright for The French Dispatch, Jodie Comer for The Last Duel, Numi Rapis for Lamb, and Will Smith for King Richard. And my two winners, again, for Best Performance are Benedict Cumberbatch for The Power of the Dog and Numi Rapis for Lamb, which is a very surprising choice. Um, for, uh, we'll start off with Benedict. Benedict gives probably the best, single best career performance uh, in The Power of the Dog, an absolutely manipulative, almost evil character at first that you suspect, and then there's a lot more depth. And just an incredibly, well, the movie itself is just incredibly deep, but... Benedict Cumberbatch makes it his own. He is definitely on the forefront for the Best Actor Oscar as well, which, uh, if they do give it to him, the Oscars did copy me. I can uh, say that here. Um, but congratulations, Benedict, for your career best performance so far. Uh, as for Numi Rapis, um, an incredibly just understated performance. This mother who's gone through so much, and then they take in this bizarre child... And the sense of motherhood from her is just palpable in this movie. It is emotional. It is strong. It is just an incredible performance that I left the theater for the first time looking at Numi Rapis and going, wow, okay, she is a best performance category deserver. So yeah. um, congratulations to Numi Rapis uh, as uh, Benedict as well uh, for best performances of 2021. Nice. 
Moving right along to Best Director for the Year. My nominees are Denis Villeneuve for Dune Part 1, Destin Daniel Creighton for Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, James Gunn for The Suicide Squad, John Watts for Spider-Man No Way Home, Lin-Manuel Miranda for Tick, Tick, Boom, and Wes Anderson for The French Dispatch. Uh, and this one should be no surprise based on my nominees. Uh, Denny Villeneuve for Dune Part 1. Uh, by far, I think he is absolutely at the top of his game right now. Uh, I would par him along with Christopher Nolan right now as two of the just best absolute working directors right now. Uh, and Dune Part 1 was absolutely a no exception to his incredible run of films. Uh, and the fact that he was able to pull off a Part 1 without securing a Part 2... And he just made sure that his vision was realized accurately to the book uh, is just incredible. And it translates so well onto the screen. And you can tell the passion uh, and all the creative decisions that he made in the movie were outstanding. So, yeah, 100% the best. Congratulations on Best Director of the Year, Denny. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we had a whole episode about our the directors that are the best right now. And he was he was on there. Um, moving on to my award for Best Director of 2021. The nominees are... Bo Burnham for Bo Burnham Inside, David Lowry for The Green Knight, Denis Villeneuve for Dune Part 1, Jane Campion for The Power of the Dog, Nia DaCosta for Candyman, Ridley Scott for The Last Duel, Valdemar Johansson for Lamb, and Wes Anderson for The French Dispatch. And my winner for Best Director of 2021 is... Jane Campion for The Power of the Dog, um, a film that like I was hearing so much from out of the circuits. Jane Campion delivered an incredible film here. Um, just she it was cool, sort of the culmination of everything as the director is. They're the one that puts everything together into the film that fits their vision. And Jane's vision for this film is absolutely astounding. It comes through in every aspect of the film. Um, and I have not seen any of her other films, I must, I must uh, admit, uh, but I will definitely be checking out her catalog um, if this is any indication of the work she's done before. So congratulations, Jane. Uh, looking forward to seeing you hopefully win the Oscar as well. Uh, we'll see. But we're on to the big one. Yep, moving along to the big one of the night, Best Picture. My nominees are Dune Part 1, Don't Look Up, the French Dispatch, Mortal Kombat, No Time to Die, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Spider-Man, No Way Home, The Suicide Squad, and Tick, Tick, Boom. And as in line with my absolute sweep, if this didn't make it, none of my other nominations and wins would have made any sense. Uh, so for me, the winner is Dune Part 1. Uh, this movie was... Absolutely a blockbuster, an astounding movie to come back to theaters for. Sci-fi at its peak right now. Um, I don't think it's going to get any better until Dune Part 2 comes out. Um, we'll see if I stand corrected, but that is how it's appearing to me. So yeah, absolutely. As a sci-fi fan, this is my number one winner. It was incredible. Awesome. Yeah, well-deserved. Congratulations to Dune and its team. Uh, so for my award for Best Picture, the nominees are... Bo Burnham, Inside, Candyman, Don't Look Up, Dune Part 1, The French Dispatch, The Green Knight, Lamb, The Power of the Dog, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and Tick, Tick, Boom. And my winner for Best Picture of 2021 is The Green Knight. A little bit of a surprise win here, because um, it hasn't won any other awards this evening. Um, but uh, for those of you who follow my review blog or followed any kind of social media, um, The Green Knight is my highest reviewed film of the year. I, in my opinion, I think it is a near perfect, uh, almost near flawless film um, that just enraptures you from the start all the way through the end. Um, I felt that it utilized the Arthurian legend mixed with the sort of artsy independent style beautifully. Um, and just wowed me from start to finish. And again, as I kind of mentioned on an earlier episode, when you walk out of a theater and you're kind of behind people and the people in front of you say, we should have saw Snake Eyes instead. I know I've seen a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> 
But uh, moving on, we're going to do some surprise awards here. Yeah, a little bit of a, a dig at the at the film industry here, I oh, guess. Yeah. Uh, so starting out, uh, this is the most disappointing picture. So a lot of high expectations for a lot of films this year. And some of them just could not help but completely miss the mark as well as the shooting range altogether. Um, so here we are at most disappointing picture. My nominees are Black Widow by Kate Shortland. Chaos Walking, directed by Doug Le Lehman. The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It by Michael Chavez. Dear Evan Hansen by Stephen Chbosky. The Eternals by Chloe Zhao. Old, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. And Spiral, directed by Darren Lynn Boosman. And my winner for the most disappointing picture is The Eternals. Um, the trailer had me super excited for this movie. Uh, everything about it had me excited. Seeing The Eternals, everything like that was super, super interesting to me. And this movie just missed by about 16,000%. Um, I just don't think it hit on any of its cylinders. I thought a lot of the performances were weak. Uh, and the story just really missed the mark and didn't add much for me. So uh, absolutely very disappointing coming out of it. Sure. Moving on to my award for best, or excuse me, most disappointing picture. I almost said best disappointing picture. <laughs> uh, for my award for most disappointing picture, the nominees are Eternals, for, uh, directed by Chloe Zhao. The Little Things, directed by John Lee Hancock. The Matrix Resurrections, directed by Lana Wachowski. The Tomorrow War, directed by Chris McKay, and Zack Snyder's Justice League, directed by Zack Snyder. Gee, I wonder why. His name's in the title. Um, and my winner for the most disappointing picture of 2021 is The Matrix Resurrections from Lana Wachowski. Um, Adrian, I don't know if you've had the chance to see this movie yet. We have not had no, a discussion, not. but uh, this is, without a doubt, one of the worst movies of the year. Um, and just absolutely boring awful and i've never had a film try so hard in the beginning of it to tell me that it doesn't want to exist um yet here we are um while there are some good parts of it there are some good additions to the cast i don't think it was strong enough at all and the trailers were so good and then it just came out and was just more cloud atlas almost <laughs> so um unfortunately the winner for that category is the matrix resurrections for most disappointing picture Moving right along to Worst Supporting Performance. Uh, short list for me. Billy Porter in Cinderella. Florence Pugh in Black Widow. And Woody Harrelson in Venom Let There Be Carnage. And my worst supporting performance is Florence Pugh in Black Widow. I think her accent is really bad. I don't think her character is interesting at all in this movie. Um, I think it's extremely flat and used for solely a poor excuse for comedic relief, um, which I only found maybe one or two of the moments funny. Uh, so yeah, absolutely worst performance. I mean, the movie itself is bad, but uh, definitely one of the worst parts of it. Which I would like to point out to our listeners and to our viewers that this is the only award that I vehemently disagree with Adrian on. I thought she was the best part of the movie. So it turns out you can have different opinions and still be friends. Turns out the rest of this country could learn a lesson from that. <laughs> Debatable. Um, all righty, so my award for worst supporting performance. The nominees are Aquafina for Raya and, the, Raya and the Last Dragon, Ben Affleck for The Last Duel, Billy Porter for Cinderella, Cedric Joe for Space Jam A New Legacy, and Adina Menzel for Cinderella. And my winner for worst supporting performance goes to Adina Menzel from Cinderella. Um, such a talented singer. Someone who is usually very, very, very good at her job. Um, completely crapped the bag on this one. Um, not a single song she sung was well done. Not any of her act acting scenes were well done. Um, she felt like she was there to earn a paycheck. Like everyone was in the movie. <laughs> um, and then ended up putting out one of the worst movies of the year. So... Except James Corden, as I said, I feel like he, as one of the, the mice, was actually pretty good at times. Usually the worst part of any movie turned out to be the best part of the worst movie. I know the movie's not good. <laughs> uh, but moving on to worst performance, Adrian. The worst performance overall. So I just have a couple nominations again, starting with Ben Platt 
from Dear Evan Hansen, Camila Cabello in Cinderella, and Salma Hayek in The Eternals. And my winner is, by no surprise, Camila Cabello from Cinderella. Um, I don't know who she wronged to have this movie exist in the way that it does. Whoever mixed her audio did not fix any of her vocals. Um, and I, that's not to say she can't sing, but everybody has their vocals touched up when it's committed to film, even speaking. But nobody touched up her audio at all. She has some atrocious lines in this movie that absolutely sound like nails on a chalkboard. Uh, and I don't know who let that get through. I don't know who checked this movie, if anybody. Um, but somebody should have stopped this. But the fact that she committed this movie to film and committed somebody to edit her audios the way that they did, this movie exists. And because of that, I have to give you worst performance. <laughs> Now, now, remind me, where, where did Camila Cabello come from? Was she like a TikTok star or something? Like, no, she was a member of Fifth Harmony, which was a very popular girl band. And then she broke off and has had a very successful uh, solo singing career. And she dated Shawn Mendes for, I think, like two or three years. Um, but they recently broke up. But yeah, pretty successful in other realms. Well, it's hard for me to believe after that award so and that performance. Um, but uh, moving on to my <laughs> nominees for Worst Performance, uh, we have Camila Cabello for Cinderella, Dwayne Johnson for Red Notice, Henry Golding for Snake Eyes, LeBron James for Space Jam, A New Legacy, and Vin Diesel for F9, The Fast Saga. And my winner for Worst Performance of 2021, and again, no surprises here, is Camila Cabello from Cinderella. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, you have success in other platforms. I find it hard to believe because if this is anything to go off of, you're awful at pretty much everything. Um, <laughs> she was horrid in this film. And again, like no one touched her audio. No one touched anyone's audio in this movie. I think they were trying to go for the whole Les Miserables thing where like they sing on set and they keep it in, which it worked for Les Miserables because they hired talented singers. But not here. Sorry, Camilla. You turned in a crap performance. Yeah. And now our final Ooh. award. Yeah, the big uh, or the, the least big award of the night, the one you hope not to get, is Worst Picture. Starting with Cinderella by Kay Cannon, Dear Evan Hansen, directed by Stephen Chbosky, and Tom and Jerry by Tim Story. And my winner is, by no surprise, of my sweep of the worst category is Cinderella. Uh, as I already stated, I don't want to harp on it too much, but this movie is absolutely a waste of time. Um, every single person besides James Corden doesn't care, it seems, about this movie and didn't want to be there. Um, and the singing is terrible, the songs are dumb, uh, and it's just, uh, you could tell there's a song in here where they tried to do like a Frozen, like, this is going to be the big song of the year, and it just falls so flat, and it's just so cringy and not good that it 100% is the worst film of the year. I, I very much agree with you, sir, but the nominees for my worst picture of 2021 are Cinderella, directed by Kay Cannon. F9 The Fast Saga, directed by Justin Lin. The Matrix Resurrections, directed by Lana Wachowski. Red Notice, directed by Rawson Marshall Thurber. And Space Jam, A New Legacy, directed by Malcolm D. Lee. And in the tightest of margins, my winner for Worst Picture of 2021 is Space Jam, A New Legacy. Now... This 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 one out. I say one out because it's, I mean it's not a good thing that it won, um, but it was I rated it one point lower than Cinderella. Um, Space Jam: A New Legacy is a two-hour advertisement for Warner Brothers and their intellectual properties. There is no nothing to this movie. It is soulless. It is heartless. It is a corporate creation designed to sell you on Warner Brothers products, which is sad. And in my review on my blog, I said that if this is the future of film, I want nothing to do with my passion anymore. Because it is that soulless and heartless, and I absolutely hate it. But we don't want to leave this on a, uh, <laughs> a negative note. Um, now we're into the new year. We had a great year in film. Thank yeah. you all for listening for the Drive Back Awards, the first annual 
Drive Back Awards. Annual. We'll be back next year. Hopefully we can uh, see some really good films this year. Obviously, again, there were a lot of films not on our lists that we didn't see. Um, some that are coming out this year, so looking forward to doing it next year. But Adrian, if any of our listeners or viewers don't know where to find us online, where can they do so? You can find us at the Drive Back Podcast, wherever it suits you, whether that's Instagram, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or here on YouTube, where you can see our beautiful faces. Uh, you can find us there. You can talk to us on Instagram. You can listen to us on your favorite podcasting app. And you can watch us here on YouTube. So make sure to subscribe, follow, and like on all those platforms to keep up to date. We post every Monday. So go ahead and stay tuned because we always have new stuff coming out. As well as I believe we have a new episode type coming out here shortly. Um, so definitely make sure to stay tuned for that. Yes, very much looking forward to that. Uh, but that's going to bring us to an end. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. We love you so much. We'll see you next time and within the new year here on The Drive Back. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Drive Back. Make sure to be on the lookout for new episodes every Monday and make sure to follow us on social media.